Hi everyone and welcome back, it's Vicky here with a new page for my Year in Flowers Art Journal. Today I'm going to play with new products that have just been released by Alte New. Let's take a look at some of them and since they have come up with watercolor set, I'm going to show you how you can make a very simple but gorgeous art journal page just by using your watercolors. So let's open this up, it is a pan with 12 colors. It comes in a very handy tin case, you can use the cup as a palette and they also give you a little water brush. Now you can uh, take out the pans if you like or press them down and they will stay put. I'm going to swatch this later on. Now they have also released top quality watercolor paper. The one that I'm holding here is the 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half. This is really thick watercolor paper, it's 140 pounds or 300 GSM. It's 50% cotton, cold press, and there are 24 pages inside, the exact same size as your card pages, so all you have to do is to just pick one of the pages, work on it, and then it can go on top of a pre-folded card. And let's take a look at the larger pad, this is again a watercolor paper pad, 100% cotton, cold press again, and there are 12 pages. Now this is 9 by 12 inches, and again it is super thick, 300 GSM or 140 pounds. I will be using this one today, since I need a bigger page for my art journal. Now I will be working with this new Paint a flower stamp set. This is absolutely adorable. It is an iris flower and they give you the outline so you can color it in with your favorite mediums. And here is how it would look if you color it. And some ideas on how you can put some cards together. However, today I'm going to use this stamp set to create a page for my art journal using watercolors on watercolor paper. So here is a look on what I have by now. This is an alphabet flower art journal. I have some of the letters by now and I didn't have I. So that's a perfect opportunity to use it and create my I page with iris flower. Now this is 6x6 which means that I'm going to pick up one of those pages and cut it out to be 6x6 so that I have a square page for my art journal. I'm also going to use my punch to punch out all those uh, little holes so that I can use it on my disc bound journal later on. And I'm good to go. Now before I start creating my background, I want to add some texture on it so it gives something interesting to the eye. That's why I'm using my embossing paste by Alte New and one of the stencils here. I'm going to apply some of the paste in um, uh, different areas. I'm mainly working on a triangle, if you notice. And I'm making sure that I leave enough space so that I can stamp my image of uh, flowers later on. Now the embossing paste is uh, completely dry, so I'm going to do the stamping. For that I'm using permanent black ink. And I'm going to stamp my iris. Now the page that I'm working on, since it is watercolor paper, it has some texture, that's why I will have to stamp it a couple of times just to make sure that I have a good impression. Also notice that I'm using permanent ink, which means that it's not going to smudge or smear later on when I will use my watercolors. Now I'm going to clean up my stamp, put that black ink away, and I'm going to bring in embossing ink. The idea is to emboss on top of that black line so that I can uh, apply some clear embossing powder and I can lift the edges slightly. This is going to help me watercolor later on and uh, it's going to make my life super easy. You can of course stamp from the beginning with embossing ink and apply black embossing powder but I find that I never do a perfect job with black embossing powder just because I get black particles all over the place. I prefer to do it with clear on top of a black stamped image. I am using my heat gun to melt the embossing powder. And just because this watercolor paper is quite thick, you will see that it takes a heat as well as a lot of water later on, but it doesn't warp too much. Now you can see here a very simple swatch that I did for all the colors. And of course you can build them up if you let them dry and go ahead on top of them. You can see how darker it gets. So 12 colors in total, all the basic colors of the rainbow. 
And of course, don't forget that you can mix them to create even more colors. For my background, I'm going to combine two colors, that's the yellow, which is called Citrus Burst, and the blue, that's called Lagoon. I'm going for a very light and soft background color, so that's why I am applying water all over the place first. Now my surface is nice and wet, and I'm going to use a really big brush, so that I can easily go over it. Now notice that just because I have that embossed edge around my image, the color is not going to bleed on top of the flower. It kind of creates a barrier between the background and my main focal point. Now I'm going to do the same again, but this time with yellow. So I'm watering it down and I'm going to apply it to the rest of the area. When uh, yellow blends in with uh, blue, it's going to create a lovely a greenish color so it's not a problem always remember that you have to follow your color theory otherwise you will end up with matte now with a smaller brush i'm going to go uh, to some more details in between the flower again working only with those two colors and of course i can go ahead and add even more color on top of it to build up and make it uh, darker if i want to you can repeat this process as many times as you like. And always remember that I'm working wet on wet. So my page is uh, soaked up with water. That's why the colors blend nicely. And that's why the color spreads out so easily. Now I love how the dry embossing paste picks up some of the color and that design appears at the background. It's quite subtle but at the same time it uh, does create some uh, visual texture back there. Now at this stage I'm really happy with how my background looks so I'm going to bring in my heat gun and just make sure that this is completely dry. Of course you can let it air dry, but I'm a very impatient crafter, so I just have to use my heat gun. And I absolutely love this uh, WOW heat gun, because it has uh, two settings, one for drying and another one for heat setting and melting the embossing powder. Now with my towel I'm just covering up the main focal point and I'm adding some splashes. I'm doing that with the Lagoon, which is the darkest color of my background. And here is a close-up look so you can see better exactly what I'm doing. When I'm working with watercolors, I always like to have a towel next to me. It really helps me to control how much water I have on my brush. And now it's time to color my focal point, those beautiful iris flowers. I'm starting with green, this is the forest glades. And I'm going to just uh, cover up all the parts that are green, leaves and stems. I'm not doing any crazy techniques here, I'm just applying color all over the areas that need to be green. No shading, no highlighting. This is the first layer and I'm going to show you later on how we can add some uh, shadows here and there. Although I'm working with lots of water, it doesn't bleed outside the lines and that's because I embossed my image beforehand. So it makes my job really easy now. For coloring my flowers, I'm going to use the purple from the palette, and that's called Deep Iris. I have diluted it with water on the tin, so you can see here. I apply a first very thin layer of color, and then I dip my brush again to color, and just touch the bottom of the petal. I let the water do the blending, and all the hard work. And I'm going to do it one more time to get deeper shadows. I'm going to use the same technique to color all the petals, and on some of them I'm going to add some yellow at the center. I'm going to do this again on a couple of petals here. So first a very thin layer of uh, the same color and then dip my brush again to get some deeper shadows. And let the water do the blending. Super easy, but uh, remember that uh, it is uh, really important to have some embossing uh, lines all around so that you don't bleed all over your background. Now for this petal I'm going to add the shadows at the end of uh, the petal and at the center I'm going to go with uh, yellow. I will let um, those two colors to uh, bleed to one another at the center for a really lovely effect. Now I'm going to put on some music and let you see how I colored everything and I'll see you back once everything is colored.
Now my flower is colored and completely dry and now I'm going to add some more details on my page. I am working with some washi tape here and I have the dye that I'm going to cut out the letter I later on. So I just used that as a placement. I'm using three different rolls of washi tape. The gold one, this one which has, uh, which is called a uh, positive and it has little uh, plus signs on top. I absolutely love this one. I think it's great for uh, art journal pages. And uh, lastly, I'm going to use a piece of this washi tape that has uh, colors that match perfectly the color palette of my page. So I'm going to play around a little bit with the placement, try to decide where this is going to go. And I'm also going to uh, create th two more areas so that I end up with three areas of washi tape, just because I like to work on uh, threes, like a visual triangle. Also, I never use uh, scissors for cutting out my washi tape. I just like to tear them out. I love those rough edges. And the fun part about washi tape is uh, it never sticks too well, so you can always lift it and replace it if you don't like it. I am using my scissors to cut off the excess and just like in the rest of the pages, I like to spell the name of the flower, so I'm going to cut out the letter I for iris. I'm using a black cardstock to do so. And I will use my glue to stick it down. For the rest of the letters, I am going to use uh, these typography letters by Tim Holtz in white. I believe this is plastic or resin. And I'm going to spell the word iris. Now, uh, you can see that uh, now the R is quite far away from the letter I, but later on I'm going to do, uh, pull them out and put them closer together since I didn't like the look. You will see the photos at the end. I'm also going to use some stickers from some uh, sticker booklets that I have by Tim Holtz again. Uh, I'm picking one that says Nature's Wonder. And then I'm also going to use uh, stickers and uh, put together the phrase You make my heart smile. Now for both those stickers, as well as for washi tape, if you like to make sure that they are going to stay put and they are not going to fall, you can also use uh, some matte medium at the back uh, or uh, any type of glue to make sure that they are nicely stuck down. And now for my finishing details, I'm using a thin black marker and I'm drawing some lines around the words on all the stickers. And I'm also going to use a white gel pen and add some highlights on some of the petals and the leaves of my flowers. And the, when it comes to art journaling, no page of mine is complete until I add some white splashes. Due to the virus, we have to stay home, we are not allowed to go out, so I cannot think of a better thing to do than crafting. So I hope that you got inspired today, that you had fun as I was playing with my new supplies. You will find links to everything down below. Thank you all so much for watching today and I'll see you all next time.